three, two, one, bam. LaTeX previews in Arg mode are getting faster, hundreds of times faster. Okay, a 20 second introduction to Arg mode. It's a plain text markup format. This is a plain text file displayed with some theming. Amongst the hundreds of features that Arg mode supports as part of Emacs, from time tracking to publishing web pages to managing spreadsheets, is the ability to interpret math fragments in LaTeX and to display them as rendered images. This is what you're looking at right now. If you use Arg's LaTeX preview system, you know the pain. It's slow and it locks up Emacs, sometimes for minutes. We've got good news. Arg's preview system has been rewritten almost from scratch. It's now anywhere from 30 to 1000 times faster and it's asynchronous, so you can continue to use Emacs while previews are generated. I opened this video by previewing a relatively short document, a two-page technical report with about 70 LaTeX fragments. Let's see how it performs on longer documents. On a longer six-page mathy report with around 160 LaTeX fragments, it's still almost instant. Moving on, at around 330 fragments, this file is approximately 15 pages of math. Um, it's going to take a little longer, but you're unlikely to notice because previews are placed continuously as they're generated. Like in the old preview system, previews are cached after they're generated. So turning them on is instant afterwards. I can clear previews without clearing the cache and then preview again and you'll see that it's effectively instant. Moving on. In this roughly 30 page document with 660 math fragments, preview generation is going to be perceivably slower. This gives us a good opportunity to demonstrate that the process is now asynchronous. I'm going to clear the preview image cache then hit the preview button and try to use Emacs while the images are being generated. Here we go. Three, two, one. It's async. Oh, it's done. Um, I guess that wasn't much of a demonstration. There's one document left, the largest one by far, with around 1200 LaTeX fragments. A few minutes ago, I said previews are up to a thousand times faster now. We'll put that to the test on this large file, but in a bit. First, the new preview system fixes a whole bunch of issues besides speed and generation time. Let's take a look. LaTeX previews are now colored according to their surroundings. In this heading, for instance, you'll notice that this fragment has the same color as the heading, ditto down here and down here. And previews are now also color theme aware. They should blend in and remain perfectly readable as you change Emacs color theme. Let's give it a go. I'm going to change to a dark theme and you'll notice that previews remain readable and the uh, heading faces are still respected. We can go again and again. Girlbox is always popular. And again. And let's go back. There's more. Inline previews are carefully aligned to Emacs baseline when they're displayed. This works with fixed pitch fonts and with variable pitch fonts. Previews now scale with the text when you zoom in or out. Let's go back here and let me try zooming in and zooming out. And you'll notice that the previews retain their size relative to their surrounding text. Okay. You can now interact with all previews by simply moving the cursor into or out of them. This functionality is provided as a separate minor mode. So let me turn on auto mode. And now as I move my cursor into a fragment, it opens up. And if I move it out, it closes up again. 
With auto mode active, you can interact with the underlying text like you would any other. For example, by searching. And now finally, the best part. With the auto mode behavior turned on, previews are generated as you type. So let's type some math here. Because this is asynchronous, I didn't have the annoying one second freeze when a preview is auto-generated that you do, for example, with packages like orgfragtog. Fragments are also auto-regenerated if you edit them. So I noticed that I made a mistake here and I swapped the one and the two on the partial derivatives. So let's fix that. And you can see that that took care of itself. This works more generally. For example, let's say I wanted to replace all instances of L with the calligraphic L. So that's one, two, and three instances. And you can see that L has been replaced and the previews were auto-regenerated. This also gives us a good opportunity to show off the new error reporting system. So if for some reason a LaTeX preview does not compile cleanly, then it is displayed differently. In this case, uh, in the error phase in red. These errors are recorded and the plan is to eventually integrate them into a linter and possibly into Flymake. But for now, you can view the error by mousing over the fragment. So this error is an undefined control sequence and this one, well, it's the same, but for different reasons. But that should give us enough of a clue to go in and fix the fragment. And everything's kosher. If you've used the popular third-party package orgfragtog, this behavior might seem similar. But aside from being much, much more performant, the included auto mode reacts to insertions no matter how they occur. For example, I could copy some text that has LaTeX fragments from a different buffer into this one and the previews are generated automatically. Or if you have, let's say, an orgbabel code block like this one that produces LaTeX output, then it's converted instantly. Orgmod can now track equation numbers. So let's turn on equation tracking in this buffer and keep an eye on the equation numbers on the right. Now I'm going to pick one of these equations, let's say this one, and turn it into an unnumbered environment and you'll notice that the equation numbers remain consistent. If I go back in here and undo these changes, then we're back to the old equation numbering. So equations are renumbered as needed. And org will do its best to keep your equation numbering consistent across the document. Lastly, let's revisit the issue of speed. Because of Emacs command loop, there's no truly async interaction with Emacs possible. This chart shows typical preview times for files up to 1200 fragments. For any given file, the vertical line is the timeline of preview image processing. White space is good. It's the time when Emacs is free to receive keyboard input. Red is bad. It's when Emacs is processing stuff and can't respond to you. So long as there aren't contiguous chunks of red on the timeline, it's quote unquote async. The dashed line tells us how long it takes for until the first batch of preview images start coming in. In practical terms, that's how long you need to wait and it's not bad at all. A single fragment takes about 300 milliseconds and with 1200 fragments, it takes about 2.5 seconds until the first preview image appears. But, but, but I've been holding out on you. 
We've been generating previews under the slowest possible settings. Orb mode provides SVG and PNG previews, and the latter are generated much faster. Additionally, we can turn off image caching for even more speed. Let's go check out that 1200 fragment file now. First, I'm going to do a regular SVG run of the kind that we've been doing. Here we go, three, two, one. And that took, I don't know, about three seconds until the first preview. Now let's clear the cache, turn off image caching, and try generating PNGs. All right, three, two, one, bam, much faster. And that's 1200 fragments in under a second. All right, here's the timing chart, now updated with the data for PNG image processing. The time to first preview for PNGs is almost constant and instant across the board. If, like me, you're sensitive to latency, you could choose to use this processing method instead. The downside to using PNGs is that you'll have to regenerate previews when you switch color themes. Although they do respect the colors of the active theme at the time of preview generation. The other issue is that they don't scale well, so that zooming into uh, text will make PNG previews appear blurry, as you'd expect. I should emphasize that there's no natural reason for SVG processing to be slower than PNG processing, and so work is ongoing to speed up the former. A quick note about image caching. By default, generated preview images are persisted across Emacs sessions, making previews instant in the future, provided the contents of your files haven't changed. Of course, this isn't as important as before, considering how fast preview generation is now. Turning off persistence makes the uh, generated previews potentially unavailable for reuse in future Emacs sessions, but they continue to be available in this one. You don't have to keep regenerating previews the way I have uh, by explicitly clearing the cache for the purposes of this demo. So that's a summary of the new LaTeX preview system for ARG. It's actually usable now. It's speedy, it's asynchronous, with plenty of visual and quality of life improvements on top. So when is it coming out? Sometime this year, hopefully as part of ARG 9.7. This video showed the what, but not the how of using ARG's new preview system. This is intentional. Many details are still being ironed out, and the interface might change a little between now and release. If you've got a LaTeX distribution installed, the idea is that everything should work great out of the box. More resources for support and customization will be available closer to release, so keep an eye out. Thanks for checking out this video, and have a good day.